Welcome to the new era of gun control. I hope you're ready because we're getting a preview of how hot and fast it's going to be. Thank you for joining me today on Lawyered Up. I'm Florida trial attorney Patrick McGinn, a former police officer turned lawyer, and I bring you news and information about guns and the Second Amendment from around Florida and around the country. But before we get to the new era of gun control, let's hear some wise words from the always educational Lucy McBath, Congresswoman from Georgia. During the H.R. 1808 hearings on the assault weapons ban, Ms. McBath said, With assault rifles, exit wounds can be a foot wide. The victim's skull explodes on impact. Organs rupture. Bones shatter. The shards serve as shrapnel and tear tissue into pieces. There's a reason why we never see the images after a mass murder. Many of the bodies no longer exist. This is the type of fight and argument you're going to see from the other side. Whether it's assault weapons or anything else, their ultimate goal is to banish all weapons, period. Let's take this article in the Kansas City Star for another angle on it. And I think you're going to see this angle more and more. We saw it in New York. We saw it in California. They're going to go after the gun manufacturers. The mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, they have a ser serious crime problem in Kansas City, Missouri. It's uh, one of the nation's most unsafe cities. Mayor Quentin Lucas condemned the country's largest gun makers Friday, saying the gun manufacturers need to help be held accountable for the illegal stream of firearms coming into Kansas City. More than 70% of the guns connected to violent crime in 2021 were produced by 15 gun manufacturers, according to an analysis by the Kansas City Police Department. Well, I would expect that to be true. I mean, don't you think that maybe like the largest manufacturer of hammers? has the most hammers in Kansas City. I would think that would be true of anything, like the largest manufacturer of whatever, nail files. I'm sure they have more nail files than any other nail file manufacturer in Kansas City. I think that goes for all products and commodities. Whoever's the largest manufacturer of it usually has the largest market share. Anyway, in Kansas City, according to their police department, Glock, is a leading manufacturer of handguns used in crimes. So whenever I see articles relating to crime and guns and illegal guns and all that, I like to look up the city's crime stats. So if we go to the crime stats for the Kansas City Police Department, it gives us a lot of information. Okay, so Kansas City Police Department keeps a daily homicide analysis, and it's, it's accurate as of Friday, July 22nd. So, so far in 2022, they've had 86 homicides. They had 85 homicides in all of 2021. So they're going to break their last year's record. If you look down in the status snapshot, you'll look at homicides cleared in 2022. Only 28 of 86 homicides have been cleared. The national homicide clearance rate is just under 50%. It's down a lot. It used to be higher, but it is down. It is just just over 50%, and Kansas City is not clearing 50% of their homicides, which is a major concern. If you look down to prominent contributing factors, they have 47, which is a majority of the homicides, more than half of them, as unknown. I would like to see an expanded list of what these factors are. How many of these are suicides, police shootings, and gang-related? If you go down to look at victims and subjects by age, race, and gender, you look at the predominant subject class as males, 18 to 24, and then go over to race, sex, you'll see that the predominant subject class there, 46% is black males as subjects, 57% as victims. So there's a significant amount of black-on-black -black crime. If you go down further, the means of attack, Homicides were 52 related to handguns, and they had six rifle-related homicides. I'm sure they include shotguns in there with rifles. And then 21 unknown types. I'm guessing those, are, those 20 ones are the ones that weren't cleared. Anyway, what these statistics tell me is Kansas City has more of a police problem than a crime problem. You get the police problem under control, the crime problem will naturally follow. But they don't want to do that. They want to now blame gun manufacturers instead of they're solving their police problem.
So all in all, looking at the summary of stats, it's it's little information, but what I can see from it so far is they have a crime problem which could be addressed by policing, but they are choosing to go after gun manufacturers. Essentially what the mayor is saying is our crime and murder rate is because of guns, when that's not necessarily what their stats say. As a former police officer looking at their stats, it looks more like a policing problem. I think if you can solve the policing problem, the crime problem will naturally follow and there'll be you know lower homicides and lower crime in general. But this this is the this is the tactic that the gun grabbers are gonna take. We saw it in California, we're seeing it in New York, and we're gonna see it in the other jurisdictions that are typically anti gun jurisdictions. And they're gonna they're gonna use whatever they make up and they're gonna make up all these wild outlandish comments as we're seeing in the HR 1808 assault weapons ban hearing to influence their constituents and try to influence the process. They know that this assault weapons ban probably won't pass, but they're coming into the midterms and they're in a bad position, so they gotta make political points, and this is one way they're gonna make political points. But I think it'll continue past the midterms. I think you'll constantly hear this drum beat from the gun grabbers for probably eternity. It should drown out once the offensive of the Second Amendment supporters goes into full swing and starts taking effect, but that could take a while. For example, when you see NYSERPA versus Bruin, just to make it from the appeals process, just to make it from the lower courts to the Supreme Courts took two years. So I think we'll see a couple years of which everything that'll be up in the air and we won't have anything calm down for you know several years ahead. Also, they're playing up big time the assault weapons and the definition of assault weapons. They made up the definition of assault weapons. The assault weapon. They're really driving and using the term assault weapons harder than they've ever done before, and a lot of people wonder. They're really driving. They're really driving hard on the term assault weapons, and a lot of people don't understand assault weapons, understand the definition, or even where it came from. But I'll give you an idea. But I'll tell you where it came from. It came from the gun grabbers. In 1988, the Violence Policy Center authored a memo for strategy on gun control. And this is what they said in their strategy. Assault weapons, just like armor-piercing bullets, machine guns, and plastic firearms are the new topic. Now this is back in 1988. And this is written by Josh Sugarman. He was the founder of the Violence Policy Center back then. The weapons are menacing looking, coupled with the public's confusion over fully automatic machine guns versus semi-automatic assault weapons. Anything that looks like a machine gun is assumed to be a machine gun. Can only increase the chance of public support for restrictions on these weapons. In addition, few people can envision a practical use for these weapons. So they're relying on the public's ignorance and using this term assault weapon because the public really doesn't understand what an assault weapon is and we need to educate them on what an actual assault weapon is it's a term made up by a bunch of gun grabbers it's simply nothing more than that so that's what i think you'll see in the next few years i think it's going to be an absolute crazy time i think it's a time we'll get through we'll get through it successfully and in the end we'll be successful but I think it'll be bouncing around like crazy, at least for the next couple years. Once again, as always, thank you for visiting me here on Lawyered Up and listening to me ramble for a while about the topics I'm passionate about. I hope you find this information useful and educational. And if you do, please like and subscribe and share with your friends.